Tom. WRKS Pickens Jackson. All systems go. Live from the Whiskey 61 Lounge inside the Bank Plus Studio. It's now our Live in the studio. WRKS Pickens Jackson. All systems go. Live from the Whiskey 61 Lounge inside the Bank Plus Studio. It's now recorded. Live in the studio. It's the Out of Bounds Show with Low Bounds. Streaming live worldwide on the Out of Bounds radio app. And on your radio at ESPN 105.9. All set. Well, let's go. The Zone. And good morning to you, Mississippi. Welcome in. I uh, already see some people listening in um, Cleveland, Mississippi, and I think Matheson, Mississippi. So that's a beautiful thing. Uh, we wish you and yours a happy Thanksgiving. Woo! Welcome into the Out of Bounds Show, 105.9 The Zone ESPN. We are always brought to you by the Golden Moon Casino Sportsbook. Good time to jump in there for Rivalry Week. You got the golden egg, got a little A&M and LSU, a little Michigan, Ohio State. It's going to be a good week of football. Uh, Also powered by Dancing Rabbit Golf Club. Bet $50 at the uh, Golden Moon Casino Sportsbook and play award-winning Dancing Rabbit Golf Club for only $25. Uh, I've got Blake Mania with, well, actually, he's, I'm on a remote. He is... Flying the plane, the jet, the out-of-bounds jet. He has all the controls, which usually is good, but I guess may, could be scary. And uh, I'm your host, Bo Bounds. I'm live from Orange Beach. And uh, it's been a while since I have, uh, did I make it down here this summer? I don't remember. I don't think I did. And uh, so it's been a while since I have been down here and, um, and, you know, broadcast a show from here, although we've done a bunch of them, as you know, from from Turquoise Place and other spots um, around, and so it's good to be here. And uh, had a great time last night. Uh, had an opportunity to speak to the Gulf Coast Athletic Club in Gulf Shores. Uh, it wasn't, but uh, I guess eight minutes from my condo here in Orange Beach. Well, not my condo; they put me up, but. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I just drove down there, and uh, they had a great group, Blake. Um, there were, you know, double-digit Mississippi State people there, um, Ole Miss, uh, obviously Bama and Auburn. Um, we had Wisconsin, uh, Army. Um, oh, gosh, they went around the room. It was so cool. Wisconsin, huh? Yeah, LSU. LSU. Of course. Um, of course. Uh, oh, there was some other Big Ten teams because of the Snowbirds. Now, which um, which fan base did you upset the most? Because I know I know they didn't like you, but one of them had to like you the least. Let's see. Um, well, we did. We <laughs> obviously I have an opinionated show. Okay, right? And and I mean uh, we do have a lot of fun a lot of the time. I think pe- most people can follow that. But uh, I didn't really go like hardcore. Into that now, the coaching search stuff was a big topic. I tried to hit three things, Blake. Um, you know, our broadcasting coach a decade ago said, "When you speak to Rotary clubs, students, universities, uh, touchdown clubs, whatever, you know, go in with two or three topics." And uh, so I went in with three: the coaching searches, the uh, sports betting, and NIL. And um, I, I, we stayed on the coaching search longer, as you can imagine. Because as you and I discuss all the time off the air and before the show and after the show, uh, for any human, uh, it's all about the unknown. Um, there's a reason why we anticipate, um, you know, that with great anticipation, uh, a big meal at night or Thanksgiving or a game or what's next. Uh, because we don't know exactly, you know, we're, our expectations most of the time, right, or that it's going to be good and fun and whatnot. But... Whether you're trying a new this, that, or the other, or you're you're breaking in a new coach, uh, that's when the hands would go up over the LSU job. The first question from the Ole Miss crew was was Lane Kiffin, and and the first thing that I heard was we're worried, 
And uh, so it was, it was a lot of fun. It, it was a lot of fun. Sports betting landed in a little bit different way. The over 65 crew, uh, you know, does not necessarily love that. <laughs> and and <laughs> I, had, I had a doctor, a retired doctor stand up and ask me a question and then give pontificated on his opinion, uh, which was fine. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. A lot of people, especially in our area, for whatever reason, over for years – um, in the South, don't like to banter back and forth, but but he was, you know, he played ball. Uh, I guess he played at the University of Alabama and then went on to play in the NFL. I gathered, uh, or it may not have been the NFL at that time. It may have been the AFL. But anyway, the point is, and then I got into name, image, likeness. He didn't like that either. No, um, you're dirty in the game. Well, you know, he was like, <laughs> I went on a sky. I get it. I get it. Everybody. I, you know, your opinion's yours. I'm good with your opinion. I just may disagree. His coach was also making less money than his scholarship was worth at the time. So the game's a little different. This is now. very true. In fact, I would like to know. That's a great point. I mean, he's Blake. probably making 20 grand. Like. I would love to know. Now, by the 70s, they were putting him in deals. But in the, I would love to know what Coach Paul Bear Bryant was making in 1965. In 1982, he was under contract as the highest paid college football coach at $450,000. Okay, do you realize how insane amount of money that was at that point for a college football coach? Yeah. First of all, in 1982, there was not a physician in Jackson, Mississippi. I want you to think about this. There was not a physician in Jackson, Mississippi, making four hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and there are some that make almost four hundred fifty thousand a month now. How about this? So Bryant's uh, contract there in nineteen eighty two is the number one head coach in college football, number one paid head coach in college football. His right. salary was actually only one hundred four thousand, and then he received a little over three hundred thousand in television and radio contract benefits. So they were like manipulated, you know, who paid what, right? The okay, original so, like booster funds type thing. All right, give me those numbers one more time. So please. so he he totaled four hundred and fifty thousand a year, but only a hundred and four thousand was what they call salary. Gotcha. Okay. And then over three hundred thousand came through television and radio benefits, is how it was worded okay. in this article from nineteen eighty two. Would you like to know who was uh, on the top of that list as well? Number two Jackie Sherrill. Well, yeah, number two is Barry Switzer at Oklahoma with two hundred and seventy thousand. Jackie Sherrill was third. He had just signed a new contract at A and M for two hundred and forty thousand annually, and then Arkansas's Lou Holtz was two twenty six. Lou, yeah, Lou baby, yeah, I love that guy. Bobby Bowden uh, was tenth at one hundred and forty thousand dollars. What a steal! Okay, so you know, it, it, by by nineteen eighty two, obviously they were paying him four hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, but they started putting him in deals in the seventies. Okay. Which is where Paul Bear Bryant Jr. and credit to him, he's built. He, you know, he's amassed. I don't know if he's a billionaire, but he's worth, you know, several hundred million dollars. Um, and he got into the good stuff, right? You know, gravel and concrete and all that stuff. Um, you know, where you see extraordinary wealth by think, you know, by people that you you don't really know, and you're like, oh wow, he's worth what six hundred eighty million. Um, I wonder what Paul Bear, Coach Paul Bear Bryant, was making in. 1965. I mean, what? 50 grand? In 50 grand? in 54 when Paul Bear Bryant signed to coach the Texas A&M Aggies, he signed for a contract of $15,000 per year plus 1% of total gate. <laughs> How about that, dog? I told you that guy's con that guy's sal- uh scholarship was 10 times worth what Paul Bear Bryant was making a year. Incredible. Isn't that amazing? Incredible. It is so. So the younger crowd was all about my sports betting and name, image, likeness, and some of the older crowd was not. But some of them were. Um, we had a few gentlemen that were like, "Hey, I get it." Um, oh, we had a Notre Dame guy in there, and I, I he asked. I didn't know he was a Notre Dame guy, and he asked me about Notre Dame, and I said, "Well, they're not what they were in 1960." Uh-oh. One when my dad was at the <laughs> University of Alabama, and he went, "You're right." Uh, most Notre Dame people can't, you know, see that. It's hard for any of us to see a lot of times what what our team or program or university is and, and isn't. But uh, anyway, all right. 
Uh, Farm Bureau Insurance call in line is 601 995 1059. Uh, the Ag Up Equipment text line is 601-885-3776. You're listening to the Out of Bounds Show on 105.9 The Zone ESPN. We're live from Orange Beach. If you're looking for a great burger made from scratch, there's only one place to check out. It's Bulldog Burger in Ridgeland. Bulldog Burger in Ridgeland, Starville, and Tupelo make the best hamburgers from scratch. And of course, they've got chicken sandwiches, salads, and a whole lot more. With outside dining, an incredible selection of draft beers, and of course, TVs on game day, you're going to want to check out Bulldog Burger in Ridgeland. Prepared for whatever the future holds. With Sam, I can. Get empowered. Reach your financial goals. Visit samican.org. All right. Woo! What's happening? Good morning. Welcome in. Out of bounds. 105.9 The Zone ESPN, powered by MississippiSportsMedicine.com for any orthopedic hiccup. MississippiSportsMedicine.com. Blake Mania, back in the Bank Plus studio. I'm your host, Bo Bounds. Um, I'm live from Orange Beach. It's a beautiful day. Uh, nice to be down here. Wish I could stay longer, but, um, you know, duty calls, I guess. Um, it's not, there's not many people down here. Um, I say that. I guess it's a nice, nice amount. Man, the uh, the roads, Yeah, I guess I don't drive on Thanksgiving week that much. Um, getting down here was a bear. Good hell. Um, but, uh, 49 was an absolute wreck racket. Um, that, that thing is gotta, just gotta be the worst designed road in the history it, of roads. It, it's really incredible. I, don't, I mean, I, yeah, I've never uh, understood as, and I know I'm not an engineer and I know we've got a probably, you know, 5,000 engineers listening across the world, but I, why was it done as a two lane road? Why was the only road to the coast done as a two lane road? <laughs> And hadn't been, you know, hasn't been revamped since. I, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> they've been working on the part in Richland for like fifteen years. Oh, uh, uh, we could do a whole show, but um, anyway, uh, once I got past Hattiesburg, it was uh, clear sailing, and um, was able to make up a little time in in the in the uh, in the car. But hey, I mean, you know, it's a different world. You know, you can listen to podcasts and audiobooks and. All that kind of stuff. So not not a bad deal. Got to catch up on um, on some things, and uh, and that was good. the uh, The big board this morning, Thanksgiving week, brought to you by Mississippi Sports Medicine dot com. Uh, Blake Mania with me. I'm your host, Bo Bounds. Rivalry rivalry week with uh, Ole Miss and Mississippi State. You know, this is such an intriguing game. I mean, it always is. And there's so much on the line every year, and the two fan bases want to win so bad that they can't function. But uh, even with all that, with with the rumors swirling around Lane Kiffin and Lane Train, you know, will this be his last game at Ole Miss? And um, I'm I'm still not convinced that he'll get the offer he wants. I, I just I don't. I don't see a path. Now, uh, that's right now. Now, if Brian Kelly jumps to Southern Cal and Lincoln Riley actually leaves Oklahoma for for LSU or uh, maybe another job, but I don't I don't I find it hard to believe that Lincoln would go to Florida, but but maybe he would. Um I mean Florida's a good job, but it's just LSU is, you know, I mean, when you wake up every morning and you know you can sign 15 kids from the state of Louisiana, um, and basically they run to your campus, you know, I mean, they grow up purple and gold. It's just it's just a different deal, and you control your state. Kind of like Kirby Smart, but Kirby's got, you know, 11 million people. Louisiana's got, I don't know, five. 
uh, four and a half or something like that. But um, but yeah, so if Lincoln Riley jumps from Oklahoma and Brian Kelly jumps from Notre Dame to uh, from Notre Dame to Southern Cal. Then it gets real weird and wild. I mean, I'm already expecting the biggest, possibly the biggest offseason in the history of of college football, especially modern day. Um, but but if that happens, you know, and Kurt, look, game day has lost its fastball, and Desmond Howard and David Pollock are, you know, like watching paint dry. Um, but... And and I don't watch it, and I've talked about this for years. I'll catch five minutes of it, but there have been many Saturdays this fall where I haven't caught any of it. Um, and maybe it's because I do this, you know, and I'm I'm entrenched, and and Blake and I do fifteen hours on and fifteen hours off, and that's that's a lot before we you know even go and meet with our awesome clients. But the the um uh, when I was in Starkville Saturday morning, I was walking around. And at the end of the show at ten fifty, uh, not ten, yeah, ten fifty. At the end of the show, they were talking um, uh, uh, job openings, and Desmond Howard gave you know some kind of nonsense answer, and David Pollock. Gave, I mean, they have no idea what's going on. But Herb Street, although Herb Street's not going to give you a lot, I mean, he's a guy that wants to keep everybody ha- uh, happy, and he's not opinionated, and so on. And hey, he's figured it out, right? Making Unless five million dollars a year. He's only opinionated if it's post bowl skirmishes. Right, right. If it's Tulsa, Mississippi State, and and so on. And I get it. He doesn't like Mike Leach because he's good friends with Craig, Craig the Pony James, and whatever. But everybody, we all, all of us like this person, and some of us don't care for for that one. Whatever. Uh, but Kirk, they asked him about Notre Dame, and again, Kirk's not real opinionated. And he said, Brian Kelly. Well, it was the second time this year that I've caught it at the end of the show that he said, Brian Kelly. And to me, that tells me Kirk, Kirk's got a beat on it. Okay. That may not happen, but Kirk has a good source. And these things can change. And I mean, Brian Kelly may have talked to his wife three days ago and they want to go. And he may wake up this morning and they may decide that they don't. And that happens to all of us when you're contemplating moving around or whatever, you're, whether you're moving homes or jobs or, or, what, or schools for your kids, whatever you're doing. But um, it's the ebb and flow of life. But the, the Kurt uh, Pollock kind of made fun of him, kind of took a shot at him. And Kurt did a double take on Pollock. And said, well, just wait and see, or something, or watch and see. Well, that's not Kirk's M.O. And so that tells me Kirk has a source that is telling him he doesn't know if Brian Kelly 100% is going to leave Notre Dame to go to Southern Cal, but he has a source that is telling him that Brian Kelly is either has, at some point in the last couple of weeks, or is strongly considering what Southern Cal is telling him, and he is listening, or his agent is listening and passing it on, however you want to talk about it. And so I don't think Kiffin's going to get the offer he wants, because I don't think he's going to get Miami. If he got if he got offered Miami, he would go. Um, obviously, if he got offered LSU, he would go. Um, we're in a different day and age with Oklahoma. And this is going to confuse some of my listeners, and that's fine. The Out of Bounds Show is brought to you by Superior Foundation for all your foundation repairs. Superior Foundation. Oklahoma, I know they've been averaging like 10, 11 wins a year, maybe more, somewhere in there. Oklahoma is not that much better a job than Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Oh, my God, Bo, what are you talking about? Well... In 1983, it was under Barry Switzer, and a couple of years ago, it was because they're in the Big 12, which is a terrible conference, and they recruit better than everybody else other than Texas. But now that they're moving to the SEC, different deal. It is. It's a different deal. And um, and MSU and Ole Miss are on TV just as much as they are, and they have just as good of facilities and just as much money. So, you know, would, would Kiffin look at Oklahoma? Maybe. 
Keep an eye on this one, Blake. Oregon. If Chris, if Mario Cristobal leaves Oregon for Miami, the question is, is would Lane Train go to Oregon? Um, he'd have to hire some recruiters, but you know the the the, the place has some buzz, and the Pac-12 is terrible, so you can win a bunch of games. I don't know if he's going to get the offer, though. We'll see. Uh, the Out of Bounds Show, 105.9 The Zone ESPN, is brought to you by Cypress Depot, the uh, leading supplier of Cypress and hardwoods in the southeast. CypressDepot.com. Cypress Depot in Ridgeland. show is also brought to you by Went McGee, the mortgage man. MortgageManMS.com. SEC Insider hit coming up next on 105.9 The Zone ESPN. WRK. Yes. The coronavirus outbreak is creating massive disruptions in how we all do business. But that makes finding the best employees to grow your business harder than it's ever been. I'm Alan Lang with Kinetic Staffing, and for 15 years we've been providing executive recruiting and long-term staffing solutions for legal, accounting, technology, and management professionals in all types of companies. Call .org. A public service message from the National Pest Management Association and the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. Woo! Good morning. Out of bounds. 105.9 The Zone ESPN. Got Blake with me. I'm your host, Bo Bounds. We're streaming live on the Out of Bounds radio app. You can hit us up on the Farm Bureau Insurance call-in line. 601-995-1059. Blake, let me know if it's anything national something day. It may be like something in Thanksgiving and you can get all emotional about it. Um, This is WRKS. Again, we're streaming live on the Out of Bounds radio app. I checked those numbers this morning, and um, thank you for downloading it, and thank you for streaming the show on the Out of Bounds radio app, and thanks for hitting the podcast there, too. We're going to add some more bells and whistles to it in 2022. Uh, It's been a home run, not just for this show, but for the station. And um, so, hey, thanks for keeping it on 105.9 The Zone. And uh, we're driven by SEC football, built on the y'all lifestyle. Hope uh, hope you're excited about Thanksgiving, Rivalry Week, the Golden Egg, and a game that could be very, very competitive and very close, and go down to the uh, to the wire, so to speak. And we've got two awesome quarterbacks in Matt Corral and Will Rogers, two really good coaches. Uh, on the right side of the football, and uh, two cool schemes, and just, uh, I mean, defenses that, you know, I guess are solid at best. Um, I think Kiffin's going to try to work the heck out of the linebackers and safeties at MSU who are, eh. and uh, obviously Mississippi State is going to try to work the heck out of the uh, uh, Ole Miss secondary that hasn't been, uh, that hasn't been, you know, challenged much because uh nobody really throws it you know i mean it's a year where the three best passing teams are Ole miss msu and uh alabama right so a lot of the times on saturday the past three months you didn't really get bombarded with 38 attempts or, you know, 42 attempts or 44 attempts. Um, A&M doesn't have a prolific passing game. Auburn doesn't. Uh, LSU was totally hit and miss. Uh, Arkansas doesn't. Uh, I mean, they've had some success, and Kendall Bryles is an absolute magician uh, offensively. And then on the, uh, you know, cross, if you look at who we played, our two teams played cross division, um, you know, Kentucky can't sling it. Um, Tennessee doesn't sling it that well. Uh, Hendon Hooker may, you know, uh, I guess may develop into a uh, a good pat. Nothing like Matt Corral or Will Rogers or Bryce Young. I mean, they are all the best, the most accurate. You know, all all the things that you think about. So uh, it's just a uh, Georgia's not 
slinging it around. I mean, they haven't been challenged. And and so th- this is where we are with, with our two secondaries. Um, they just haven't faced a lot of well-old machines uh, as far as the passing game, Blake. So that's that's what it looks like on Thursday. And they're going to go – now, Ole Miss can run the ball. You know, so you – they get to stretch the linebackers both running and throwing the ball. Um, and Mississippi State may be able to pop pop a couple here and there, but they're obviously going to go um, right at that Ole Miss secondary, just like Lane Train's going to go at the uh, at the linebackers and safeties. We'll just see who uh, uh, who wins the matchups and who's more efficient. Um, you know, who doesn't turn it over, who makes more explosive plays, all that kind of good stuff. Out of Bounds, 105.9 The Zone ESPN, brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue, the official health care provider of the Out of Bounds show. I'm uh, I'm live from Orange Beach. I had a great time last night. Uh, Blake and I were talking about how, and we got into this a little bit. Um, I spoke to the Gulf Coast Athletic Club, and I, I really had – you know, three topics that I, I wanted to hit. Uh, the coaching, we I, we call it the silly season, but the coaching carousel or job openings, the coaching searches that are going on right now that everybody loves because of the unknown. It's anything in life. That's how we're wired as humans. And, and then sports betting, which may have rubbed some people wrong over 65. And then name image likeness. Maybe didn't land, you know, for some people over 65 in the room. But it was a great discussion, great group, and uh, just an awesome, awesome group, man. They're committed. A lot of Mississippi State people there. Uh, Had some Ole Miss. uh, Of course, Bama, Auburn, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, I can't remember, LSU, among some uh, some other schools. So I had a blast talking to that group. And a uh, beautiful day here in Orange Beach. I was thinking about jumping in the ocean after the uh, game, you know, because it was only 42 degrees when I got up. I'm sure it feels great. People were on the beach when I got here yesterday. And uh, I poured a Dos Equis and, and walked out on the uh, uh, balcony. And, you know, there were people, little pockets of people playing and so on. And uh, even some little people out there. So that was cool uh, to see. A great place, though. OBA, you can't beat it. You know, OBA, Perdido, Gulf Shores. Um, I may have to smash a uh, a po' boy somewhere before I uh, head out. I don't know if I'm going east to Destin. I got an offer there. Or going back to Jackson. We'll just have to uh, just have to see what unfolds on the tour. I'm on tour. Let, let, me, let me ask you a question about your... Widespread <laughs> panic has nothing on me. Go ahead, Blake. Widespread panic. Uh, uh, so last night when you were talking coaching stuff, did you suggest to them that Brian Harson might tuck tail and run after one year at Auburn? I did. So I threw that out, and and one Auburn fan uh, chimed in. Hope so. <laughs> They're already done. <laughs> no, seriously, there was a group to my left, twenty feet away That's from amazing. me. Amazing of dudes, and the first thing he said was, "Hope so." They're done. He's already lost the fan. Look, I compare it to Joe Moorhead. And this isn't fair to Brian Harson, okay? And, and it really wasn't fair to Joe, but it, it the climate is what it is, all right? The Out of Bounds Show is brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue. The official health care provider of the Out of Bounds Show. Blake, literally, this guy was wearing a shirt. I'm not kidding. It was a combination of AU and War Eagle. Oh, baby. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was awesome. Warrior. Awesome. And, um, but th- he's already lost the fan base, Brian Harson at Auburn. And so I don't know how that's going to look. If I had to bet on it, and again, this makes no sense what we're doing in the, in the w- world of collegiate athletics. But, uh, if I had to guess, they'll fire him next year this time. And, um, if he doesn't take a job. If Brian Harson can't get the Washington job, Washington Huskies for our listeners, not football team in the NFL. Um, and I know you haven't watched Washington Husky football, and I don't blame you. But up in Seattle, that job is open, and it, and Brian Harson's from that area and coached at Boise forever. If he doesn't take that job, 
um, I think he'll last one more year on the planes, and um, and then they'll they'll go another direction. I'm not sure Alan Green will have that opportunity, but you know, from everything I'm told, Alan Green's a a sharp guy, and um, you know, I think you need to give ads at least two shots. This thing is not easy, uh, especially with the expectations today. You know, the state and Ole Miss type teams want to go to you know New Year's Six bowl games. And the ones up from that want to win the national championship every year. So we're not insane or anything. Um, the uh, Yeah, so Blake, to answer your question, I think he's done at Auburn. It's just a matter. I know that sounds crazy, but I think he's done at Auburn. I'm with you. I understand what, where you're coming from because, like you said, it's it's not even the losses necessarily. Uh, I mean, you no Auburn fan wants to go six and six, obviously. But if it had been a little different in the way that it occurred, but blowing a twenty five point lead at home to state, and then you followed up the next week by just laying a goose egg against Shane Beamer in South Carolina, uh, those two losses, the way they occurred, just like you said, it's hard to recover uh, the fan base from that. Short of going like ten and two next year, right? And you can't, like you said, you you can't lose to to South Carolina and Mississippi State. Uh, boy, Shane Beamer's riding high. All right, let's get into some other things. Out of bounds, powered by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. Here we go. Yes, Lane is rumored to be in every coaching search. He's not. Um, you know, it's it's amazing that that Lane is rumored. I mean, Lane's a good coach, but he's not. It, it's just incredible that he's been able to keep his name and somehow build this brand and I don't even think he did it on purpose um I mean he does the Twitter stuff on on purpose but you know even that's not building the the deal was done prior to that um I don't think Scott Strickland wants him at Florida um he's not on the top three at LSU um Southern Cal, I find it hard to believe. His best option, if he if he really sees the writing on the wall, is obviously if he stays at Ole Miss, he's going to get a monster payday. Okay, so we know that. Um, Miami is not the number one candidate. I think Mario Cristobal, that's his job to have. And And by the way, for our listeners, Mario Cristobal is the head coach at Oregon. Now, that opens up Oregon, and then I think Lane, he may could get into that. Um, I don't know if he would want to go to Eugene. I mean, Oregon's a nice program, but I don't know. I I just, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure he's going to get the offer that he wants. Um. Now, is some other jobs open if Oklahoma opens? If Lincoln Riley goes to LSU, well, then it gets interesting. Now, if you talk to people in the business, they'll tell you that Joe, Joe Castiglione wants a buttoned-up, you know, CEO-type coach. And although Lane is, without a doubt, grown up, um, even even the look, he's going to be able to do whatever he wants on Twitter at Ole Miss. Even that at Oklahoma is not going to fly. That's just not. It's not their mo. It's not Oklahoma's deal. And and so Joe Castiglione is known as one of the best ads in the country. And uh, I, I just don't. I don't think that's a fit. Um, so we'll see there. But we're, it's about to get wild, and if Brian Kelly leaves Notre Dame, and Blake wants to talk about what Notre Dame is today, and we can, um, if Brian Kelly leaves Notre Dame to go to Southern Cal, for me, all bets are off. Because if Brian Kelly leaves Notre Dame and Lincoln Riley leaves Oklahoma, there is no telling what could happen in the landscape of college football and – uh, guys taking different jobs. There's just no t- – because we have a finite amount of good coaches. Then you're going to have to start leaning on coordinators. Even hiring good – even hiring head coaches is a risk. There's a risk for every AD, big-time risk. And then you got to start kind of sizing up coordinators. We've had what, Blake, two coordinators that have had success 
at State and Ole Miss? Tommy mm-hmm. Tuberville yeah. and Dan Mullen? Yeah, I guess that's that's about right. Okay. Um, the others, you know, Brewer was Billy Brewer was the head coach at La Tech. So he had already cut his teeth on how to run a program. And, again, that was a million years ago. So nobody had any money, and it was a rural, you know, unsophisticated sunbelt, but whatever. Uh, Jackie Sherrill had already cut his teeth at Pitt and A&M. Um, you know, Ed Ogeron and Sylvester Croom, you don't blame them. You blame who hired them. I mean, they, they were so not ready or, or not qualified to uh, be head coaches. So, you know. Sweep that under the rug. Moorhead just couldn't run it. Matt Luke. And now we have two guys that have been through the battles and the fire in Leach and Kiffin. So that's where we are. Now, Notre Dame, you know, they need to join a conference. Um, I wonder if they will be pushed to join a conference with the new college football playoff. Or if they just sit there and go, you know, if you're going to expand it, that definitely gives us an opportunity to – um, to make it, whether we're the 8 seed, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever, or higher. Uh, Brian Kelly's done a great job. They continue to recruit in the top 10. Uh, they'll never be able to win a national title and haven't won one since 1988, which may as well be a million years ago. But they can be competitive. Uh, they can be you know, 99% of the country outside of Georgia and um, Bama and some others. And so we'll see. Also, Blake, you know what I, I we threw out last night when I was speaking to the Gulf Coast Athletic Club? What's that? Uh, what will Dabo do? You know, we automatically assume that they'll just be back. You don't ever know. Uh, Nebraska hasn't made it back. Uh, Tennessee hasn't made it back. Texas hasn't made it back. Now, Dabo has proven that he can win two national titles and play for two more. Um, It will be interesting. I I mean, absolutely fascinating. I cannot wait to see. Does Clemson automatically bounce back next year and get their act together? And are they a part of the four teams, you know, throughout the season and at the end? Did, did they win their way back into the college football playoff? Because um, every year that you're not there, you know, to me, I, I just think it, it it makes it that much more difficult to get kind of back in the ring. And, you know, one thing you don't want to do is if, if you fought your way to the beachfront real estate that we talk about all the time, you know, and everybody wants a piece, uh, you don't want to lose your deal there, your, your spot. So I can't wait to see if Dabo can land on. Oh, and Dabo's going to have to. Uh, <laughs> Dabo got cute. Uh, Mike Shashevsky did this twenty years ago. Um, oh, who was the other coach who did it? Oh, come on. Well, anyway, Mike Shashevsky did it in college basketball about I'm not taking one and Duns, and he changed his tune. <laughs> one of his young assistant coaches sat him down and said, "Coach, <laughs> we need him." Hey, coach, do you? This is 20 years ago, so Mike was a much younger man, right? 50 years old, he's 70 today. Uh, Coach, do you want to win another natty? Well, yeah. Okay. We're going to need to take one and done. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Coach, do you want to be Bobby Knight and be a dinosaur? Or do you want to evolve and adapt? Well, I want to evolve and adapt because I want to cut down the nets again at a Final Four. Okay, well, Coach, you need to get out of the way and let us go do it, but we need to go get one and done. Got it. Ready? Break. So, Dabo... Had you know got all cute and and rolled out. Well, we don't want to take transfers. Well, uh, guess what? You're Clemson. Of course, you want to take transfers. Anybody in any business, shout out to Kinetic Staffing, wants to add talent to their roster. That would be like us. Well, we don't want to add talent to our business or to our organization or to our church or to our school. Well, if you're not always on the hunt for talent, well, there's no point in getting out of bed. I mean, what are we doing? I mean, talent accumulation is part of the deal. And so Dabo has got – he kind of went a little moralist, a little, little too southern sappy, right? And uh, he and Freeze can do that. 
You know, I mean, uh, Dabo is freeze. He's just better and can contain it. But sometimes when you get a little bit too much on your high horse, you get zapped. Dabo is going to have to pivot like Mike Krzyzewski did 20 years ago, and he's going to have to go in the transfer portal or Clemson's not going to be back because Georgia, I mean, even Mississippi State and Ole Miss have had success. Now, look, it's probably 70% of the time you're going to miss. Okay. You know, if, you, if, if you've got an analytics team in-house and you really know what you want, and you can really identify the position on the t- on the field that you need. And if they can just be a starter or rotate in the two deep, that's what we forget. We're all about, well, uh, you know, you've heard this, because once we hear this as guys, we say it over and over again. Well, if you sign a JUCO, he has to start. No, he doesn't. But he needs to get in the two deep rotation as soon as possible. And so with transfer portals, man, if that guy can get in the two deep and play on special teams, W for Kiffin and Leach. Same thing for Dabo. If he can add some depth to O-line, D-line, safeties, whatever it is, boom. It's like high school. You're always recruiting. You're recruiting students, one, and you're recruiting athletes. That's the way it is. And if you're not, you know, you're falling behind. So, Blake, I think Notre Dame is a fringe top ten job, and um, it's a it's a it's a it's a great school academically. You can still go to New Year's Six bowl games. You can still go to the college football playoff. Although, again, I, you look at this season, and it, it's clear that if they were in the ACC and had a chance to play for the ACC title, they'd have a much better shot at getting into the playoff. No right, question. Right now, it looks like they're outside looking in, and that would be the fear moving forward: is that that continues to happen. I, that's a good point, Blake, and it's all about top 25 wins for the college football playoff committee, as we'll see tonight. And you know that, and I know that. And the problem for Notre Dame, Blake, is that Stanford and Southern Cal, among other teams that they have uh, scheduled, are dog poo-poo right now. And so you're not getting top 25 wins on your ride. And look, here's what the – as I was speaking to the club last night and, and one of the Notre Dame guys, um, their schedule is so fractured. I don't see how you sell a team on what your goal is. And here's what I mean. All the players in the Power Five conferences understand the divisions and trying to win as many games and and maybe, if you're talented enough, getting to the championship game within your conference. Same thing in MAIS and MHSAA. Kids get that. Hey, we're trying to win our region or or we're trying to win 4, 5, or 6A in MAIS. When your schedule is so fractured, one week you're playing Boston College and the next week you're playing Stanford, I think the players are like, what are we doing? One week we play Michigan State, one week we play Southern Cal, one week we play Navy, you know, one week we play Purdue. What, what is this? You know, what what is our goal? Are we really that fired up about playing Purdue? Are we that fired up about playing Stanford? Are we that fired up about playing Boston College? I I doubt it. And, like, what is our goal? I get it to go to the college football playoff, but don't you want goals in September, October, and November? And I just think the Notre Dame schedule is so fractured today compared to 20 years ago. And if NBC is going to put them on Peacock and stuff like that, Blake, you know, what exactly are they thinking, and 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 where is this going for them? So I agree they need to join the ACC. Boy, that'd be a big deal for the ACC, wouldn't it? Blake and I were talking about their revenue this summer and how far away they are from the Southeastern Conference. I mean, they were more Big 12 revenue, which is low, than SEC revenue and Big 10 revenue. But you add Notre Dame to the ACC – We're talking about some real money over five or ten years, right? I mean, when you look at that number, you're you're like, holy smokes. The Out of Bounds Show is brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue. The official health care provider of the Out of Bounds Show. It's also brought to you by Mississippi Smart Homes. MSSmartHomes.com. You want the right security system for your home. And that is MSSmartHomes. 
smarthomes.com. Welcome in, live from Orange Beach on a Tuesday. For all your truck accessory needs, there's one stop to shop. That's Rick's Pro Truck. And now there's Rick's Pro Truck Commercial. That's right. At RPT Commercial, they can service everything for your company fleet. Whether you need spray and bed liners, customizable toolkits, or anything to do with wheels and tires, RPT Commercial on Highway 80 in Pearl has you covered. 